All right, hey you guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a new kind of video that I actually just thought of. I had something else planned, but I was like light bulb moment. So here we are. So for this video, I wanted to give you guys some options if you were struggling with your natural hair. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. Got my big bucket of ideas right here. Big bucket of stuff. So this video really all started because I saw a um, clip, a reel, whatever on Instagram and this was my first time seeing it but it was on onion juice, putting onions in your hair. You know, I haven't done my research, I'm just being honest, that it could possibly have some great effects for your hair. It probably does help promote hair growth. How and ever, I just don't feel like doing all that. I don't feel like getting my onions for my pork chops, for my chicken, my burgers, and putting them in my hair and making onion juice. So if you don't wanna take all of your groceries and make masks and blend and all that kind of stuff that's even more time consuming, just get you some castor oil. This is the only brand that I buy and I've been using this for the past six years. It's the Tropical Isle Jamaican Black Castor Oil. This stuff is thick. It lasts for a good amount of time. I also add a few other oils in it if I want to, but I still maintain like a separate bottle for just castor oil by itself. Apply it to your scalp, give it a little massage. I have been through hair ups and downs, you guys, from having bald spots after being pregnant, lots of shedding, and then being on the complete opposite side of my hair is flourishing, it's growing, it's super thick. And honestly, I say most of it comes down to I keep things very simple and this has been my best friend. So I highly recommend you trying Jamaican Black Castor Oil. I will link this down below. And of course, you y'all in person, you can go experiment and stuff in the kitchen if you want to. But all in all, you just need a really good oil and to be very consistent as well with it. And I'm pretty sure you should see some changes and see some growth within your hair. So my next try this, not that, is really for, is really for me, is wearing your hats all the time. Y'all, I wear tons of hats. I love just being able to just throw these on. However, the lining in these is really, this is my favorite one, dries out your hair, it snags your hair, your edges, the top, it just becomes very dry. Well, my hair, my hair just becomes very dry. It's fine to wear these occasionally. But if you like me, I wear them all the time. And lately I've been having a lot of shorter pieces because of breakage. Now if these hats were lined with satin, we'd be good. But since they not, we ain't. It's time to not ditch them, but to have something else for your daily wear. And that's why I highly recommend getting a satin line beanie. These are everywhere. The first one that I got was from Grace. I think it's Elay. I could be saying that completely wrong. You guys know what I'm talking about. But she was the first one that came out that I knew of with these satin line beanies. I've lost the one that I purchased from her years ago, but I just got this one from Amazon. It's just a black beanie, you guys, with satin right here on the inside. And I've been trying my best to slap this on whenever I just need to run out and about, go to the grocery store, take Isaiah down to the bus stop, pick him up from the bus stop, like that kind of thing. Just putting this on instead of a regular hat. Satin is so much better for your hair as far as keeping the moisture in. You don't have to worry about snags. You don't have to worry about breakage really. It's just a better alternative. So I highly recommend trying a satin cap and really getting used to wearing this, especially now that we're going into the winter months. It's just gonna protect your hair a whole lot better than using like a regular cap. I want to talk about hair products. Having too many hair products can be confusing. It's so confusing. It's frustrating. It's all of the above, especially as well if you don't know your hair porosity. We talk about types of hair, type 3, type 4, but if you don't know how your hair absorbs and holds in moisture and all that great stuff that comes with hair por porosity, then you might be wasting money on products that are probably aren't even benefiting you. So what I did at one point 
when my hair was kind of going through it after stress. It was just a lot happening with me personally. I'm one of those people, if something's happening, going on in my life, going on in the background, you're gonna see it with my skin, you're gonna see it with my hair. And I also noticed when I was trying to get my hair on track, you know, I was committed to a healthy regimen and I still was not really seeing all of the fruits of my labor. Products, of course, depend on hair type, porosity, texture, all that kind of stuff. However, I do recommend instead of going for multiple brands and using bits from this company and that company, I highly recommend just sticking to one brand. One brand will not only save you some money, calm down on being a product junkie, but it's also gonna help with your routine, keep things very simple. And most products, whenever you're looking at one particular brand and then you're looking at the collections with those brands, they are going to guide you. So this is from Baskin Bloom. I just have a whole set that I try and stick to. Another one of my favorite companies is TGIN. I love the honey collection for them for my hair. That's another thing. If you keep trying different products from here, here, and here, you're not really gonna know if you're having some issues where that issue is coming from, from what product. And you're also not gonna know what's helping you as well. So stick to one brand one collection for a couple weeks and see how your hair is and then reevaluate after that. All right, so let's talk protective styles. So if you are new to protective styles, you probably have maybe just been bunning your hair or doing mini twists or mini braids and maybe, just maybe, you wanna do something different. So I'm gonna talk about wigs and I'm gonna talk about locks and braids and those kind of things. So if you're wanting to get in wigs, if you're wanting to put your hair up for the fall or the winter and really take some breaks from it and you've never worn any kind of wig before I highly recommend two wigs for you to start off with and to try one would be a headband wig because you really only have to worry about your hair in the front um, no lace no glue no adhesive no nothing it's literally one of the easiest wigs the easiest styles you could possibly wear to protect your hair and then another kind of unit i recommend first is a u-part wig with u-part wigs of course keep in mind really try and get one that's close to your texture um, if you're really trying to stay away from heat or having to manipulate your hair because with a u-part wig you will have to leave some of your hair out if you want to take it a step further and you've kind of passed that this is for those who have the budget and really just want a nice wig to last some months, six, seven months or so. Just because you're new to wigs doesn't automatically mean that you should get a cheap unit. Because if you get a cheap unit and you're new to them and it sucks and all that kind of stuff and you hate it, the lace is horrible, you don't know how to apply it, all this kind of stuff, it can really throw you off and really leave a bad taste in your mouth. I highly recommend you getting like the new clear lace units that are out. I am absolutely in love with the clear lace, HD lace as well, because even though you're new to the unit, it's going to be so much easier for you to apply. It's much more forgiving as well if you don't get something right. And it's also going to look more natural and that is always what we are going for. If you are looking for a non-wig, go for locks. These, I'll put a picture right here, but these were one of my most favorite locks that I have worn. Actually, one of my most favorite styles that I have worn ever because they were super soft they are soft locks they felt good in my hair i didn't have any issues with them and they were cheap they were cheap as well they took me no time to do i also highly recommend trying a lightweight twist style or braided style as well to give yourself a smidge of a break stick with something that's lightweight if you really are wanting to get into more protective styles if you are like me and you do not like to wear bonnets ditch the bonnets if you have to you know i feel like some styles require us to wrap our hair a little bit at nighttime but if it's just for every day ditch the bonnets i hate going to bed with those things on Honestly, I don't like them because I don't think they're cute. I just, just one of those things, I just, I just don't like it. I don't really like stuff on my head like that either while I'm sleeping. I like to be nice and free when I'm sleeping. 
so I sleep with this. I have been using a silk pillowcase for the longest time, you guys. Silk pillowcases, satin pillowcases, again, just like the satin cap, they just have so many benefits. Um, for your hair just retaining moisture. I have a couple of these actually that I've mainly gotten off of Amazon. They've lasted me. I love them. They're good for my skin as well. So I highly recommend trying to sleep on a satin pillowcase. Your hair is just always protected when you get in the bed. So whether you had a drunken night or you're just tired, you don't feel like getting up, you're sick, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about it. And then you don't have to worry about your bonnet and stuff coming off either and your hair not being protected. With a satin pillowcase, you are always good to go. Let's talk about ditching the puffs, ditching the wash and goes for a second. And you are really wanting to focus more on retaining your length. You see, you know, your hair is growing, but every time it grows, it just, eh, you gotta cut it off. I highly recommend for a little bit, okay? Just for a couple weeks at a time, keeping your hair stretched as much as possible. I feel like whenever people hear like something like, oh, keeping your hair stretched, they automatically think, oh, I've gotta apply heat or I've gotta flat iron my hair or I've gotta blow dry my hair, something along those lines. And that's not true. There are so many ways to keep your hair stretched. I am not scared of heat, doesn't bother me because I don't use it a lot. So if I use it once a month for a year, that's 12 times, I'm cool with that. Long as you got heat protectant, long as you're doing it right, long as you're using the right tools, you should be just fine. But I highly recommend trying stretching your hair if you're looking to retain your length because that's going to help minimize your natural hair, your curls from, you know, going into one another, those single strand knots that you have to cut off, dry ends, split ends. Also helps on like a daily basis, just styling your hair. To me, whenever I'm, my hair is stretched, I don't have to worry about too much detangling, nothing like that because my hair is stretched, it's straighter. For me, the straighter my hair is, the easier it is for me to maintain and keep up with, but that's just me. So if you haven't done anything like this, and I don't mean like stretching it for a week and then being done with it. No, keep it stretched for a week or two, wash it, keep it stretched again, take a break, like that kind of thing. Let's ditch the wash and goes for a little bit and the high puffs and let's focus on our hair stretch and pulling it into a protective style that way, which can also be very beneficial. For my last try this, not that, let's talk about what we put on the inside of our body. So if you have been doing everything that you think is right, you've been getting your trims, you have been sleeping on your satin pillowcase, you have been doing everything as best to your ability as possible, I highly recommend talking to your doctor about your body. You should be going to those preventative doctor visits yearly anyways, but if you have not and it's really concerning you because you can kind of feel if like something is not right, highly recommend talking to your doctor. And I also highly recommend just looking at what you are eating and drinking every day, you guys. What we put into our body show, it's going to show on the outside side not only going to show like with your weight it's going to show in your hair it's going to show in your skin one thing i've definitely done i've really upped my water intake as well so up in my water intake and then look at your vitamins you guys and make sure you're taking your vitamins make to make sure you're taking your iron supplements um, if you are anemic as well, like myself, that kind of thing can cause shedding, hair thinning, hair loss, all that kind of stuff. So really just think about what you're putting into your body and just being open and honest with your doctor and just talking to them about what you're noticing because then they can do what they need to do, do their job and to help you get on the right track. Anyways, you guys, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this, try this or that, which I think I kind of did, let me know by subscribing. Also, give me a thumbs up for this video and give me some comments below. Tell me something that you're struggling with with your natural hair. Let me know down there in the comments. And that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in my next video.